How's it going, bro? Today I'm going to be teaching you the terminal. So let's just get straight into it. First of all, the terminal. So you might be new to Linux or technically you don't have to be on Linux to use the terminal, but essentially the terminal is just it's just a way to interact with your operating system. So here I spawned a terminal window for you it might be a little bit more different. Like maybe you got like a graphical interface. If you don't know, just type in terminal in your like search bar for your like files and programs and all that. And you'll probably find a terminal program. So essentially, like, what is this? Right now, by default, it's very likely that you're at your home directory. That little, like, squiggly line, the, I forgot what it's called, but the squiggly line means home directory. Like, this is your user's directory. So you'll probably see, if you do ls, you'll probably see all the files that you see. So ls literally just means, like, list. Like, list all the directories. And I'm not actually going to do it here. Wait. Okay, for example, I'm in this directory called footage right now. If I do ls, it's just going to show all the different footage I have right here you can see like so there we go ls shows you every single file so you got one file one file two file three file four file five you, you get the point then you also got some other commands like copy and remove so cp it's not that kind of cp copy essentially literally copies a file so if you have some file called so we have this jpeg right here if I copy this and then type in another name after like let's say new copy dot jpeg then if we do ls now we should see that new copy.jpg is right there. So it's as simple as that. And if you want, if you copy and let's say you do, so by default, it's not gonna ask you this, or it's very unlikely that it's gonna ask you. So we're actually gonna get to that in a later section called aliases. But right now, just be aware that you should be careful when you're copying. And same with removing. So you can do remove, let's say new copy. So you just remove a file. And then it's not going to, by default, it's not going to ask you. And remove is, again, dangerous. It's not like, and remove is a bit dangerous because it does not put the file into trash. Like, it doesn't put it into a trash can. It just deletes it. So you need to be careful when you're using this command. Likewise, you have move. So move just moves the file. So let's say you got the new copy and you want to move it to the directory outside of it. What you can do is you can do double dot. So double dot represents the directory above your directory, like your parent directory. And then that will literally move the file from this directory to the directory that's... So we'll move the new copy into the home directory that, right there, the squiggly line. And alongside this, you also have subcommands, kind of like, for example, you also have remove directory, and this is a command that technically should be using for directories instead. However, you can also do RMR, and this means like recursively delete. So if you do this onto a some directory called like... We'll say like you have some directory called directory. And this had like a whole bunch of like files. This had like A and blah, and you know, just had a whole bunch of files. This would recursively delete everything inside and then the directory itself. But if you do, if you try to remove a directory by itself, like you just removed a directory, it's going to say you can't delete directories. It's going to say that you cannot delete directories. Oh, you know, I actually nearly forgot to mention. There's also another command called CD. CD just means change directory. So essentially you can just use this to change the directory. So if you use change directory by itself, what you're immediately going to do, you're going to notice, is you're just going to go back to the home directory. So I change directory, boom, I'm there. But if you have a file called footage, then you can do footage. And if you have subdirectories, then you can keep like appending and just adding like next directory next. But if you do that, changes directory to footage, simple as that. Finally, you also have commands like touch. So touch literally just creates a new file. So if I say touch new file, then if I do ls, we'll see that there is a new file. Simple as that. But also this new file is going to be empty. So if we do something like cat, cat essentially, it's a bit of a more complicated one. It stands for concatenate, which concatenate means to like put two files together. But also what you can do is you can just use cat to see the contents of a file. Now you added new file and nothing came up. Now if I do cat, um, what is it? New copy.jpg. It's going to have a whole bunch of just symbols, but this is like literally the JPEG information. That's like the text inside the file that allows it to be a JPEG. But let's say I go into Vim. So if I use Vim, that's a text editor. It probably is on your computer. If I go into Vim and let me just close this. Now I type in like, this is my new file. Isn't it cool? I can save this. And also, sorry, to save Vim files, what you want to do is you want to just type in capital. You want to type in two capital Z. So capital Z, capital Z, or shift Z, shift Z, and you'll, you'll save and exit. So now if I do cat new file, it's going to have, this is my new file, isn't it cool? Simple as that. And again, if I had a new file two, and I said, this is my second file, it's cool, eh? It's cool, eh? 
I save that, shift Z, shift Z. And then I do cat new file. I do cat new file and new file two. Then you can see it concatenates it. But you're probably not going to use this feature. Like you're probably just going to like use it to like view the contents of one file. And that's usually how it's used. So I actually went very quickly over it, but you'll probably have a text editor. For example, for me, I use Vim. But Vim is probably a bit of a complicated, like if you don't know how to use the terminal, then Vim is maybe a bit complicated. But there, there might be another program called Nano installed. If not, you should install it. Just very simple text editor. It literally like go, when you use it, it'll tell you how to use it. So it's pretty simple. Now after this, I'd say some other essential commands to know is something like pkill. pkill essentially just lets you kill any, like any process that's going on. For example, let's say we have Let's say I wanted to close my Brave tabs. I actually have some Brave tabs up here. I'm just going to type in Brave. And if I press it, you can see, boom, I just, a couple tabs disappeared. So that's a very easy way. You just type in the name of the process and it will just delete all instances of it. So it's useful if you've got a program that's just like frozen or something. Next, you have something like Top or HTOP. So Top is a bit, I'm not going to lie, it's a bit of an oldie. I personally prefer HTOP. HTOP, you probably have to install it. But essentially, it just literally, it's like the, how would you call it? Like the system setting, like system monitor. Josie, okay, this is my CPU. Like this is my, I don't know, threads, I think. Like it shows you the core, like each core of your CPU, your memory, swap, all that good stuff. And then you can also see like, as you can see right now, I've sorted it by which process is the most intense. And you can see that it's OBS. So, you know, it's just cool like that. And then finally, grep. I'd say grep is like, this is now getting slightly more advanced, but it's still like pretty good. Essentially, if you have a list, a long list of files, let's say, let's say you wanted to view all your fonts, you can do FC dash list. It'll show you all your fonts, but again, pff, there's a lot. How are you meant to find like with the font that I just installed work? So let's say you just installed the hack font. You know, you could either search for it all day or a little bit easier. You can pipe. So pipe essentially means like when you've generated a text stream. So this is a text stream, like you generate all this. When you pipe it, it then puts it like you can process that text stream. So let's say we use grep. Now it's going to kind of like filter through the text that we just generated. So what you're then going to do is you can type an I. I just essentially means that casing doesn't matter. We don't know exactly how hack is spelled. Like, is it a capital H or is it lowercase? Like, and we don't even care. But if we just type in hack, boom, it'll show you now every single instance of hack. And, you know, there's a bit more commands, but that's like the easiest way to like use it. Just grep dash I and you can search through whatever you're searching for so oh hack italic okay like now you can like actually like work with this this is easy so that i would say is the most essential commands to know obviously there's so much more but i could be going like all day about it so next the question you might be wondering is what terminal should you use for example here i'm using st but there's literally thousands of other terminals there's uh, kde there's K term, the, the Terminator, I'm pretty sure I have that. Yeah, I have another terminal installed. Sometimes I just have to use this if ST is not working. But there are so many, like, which one should you use? Now, I'd probably say, unless you're very interested in using ST, I probably wouldn't recommend it because it's a bit minimal. But you kind of have to know, like, the whole, like, DWM ecosystem. You don't have to, but, like, it helps. It helps. So I'd say for a beginner, it's maybe a little bit too minimal. And I would probably recommend something more simpler. Probably, I'd say whatever terminal that your setup just comes with by default, probably just use that. Like if you're on KDE, don't worry about switching terminals, just use the K terminal, like the K terminal, I don't know what it's called, but use that default KDE terminal and should be fine. If not, I'd probably say download the KDE terminal. That's what I'd suggest. So next, I just want to show quickly roughly how Linux works. So essentially, if we go all the way to CD dash. This takes us to our root directory. So if I LS, you're gonna see all your root directory system files. It should look pretty similar, if not the same for you. What you have to understand is everything in Linux is just a file. Every single thing is a file, even your process. So there's webcam, essentially. This is me using MPV and then webcam. Like I'm, I'm going into dev, which means like devices, slash I think uh, it's called vid. Video zero, yeah, video zero. This is just like a regular file. Like if I, ah, you're gonna see, oh, it's okay. Okay, I guess it doesn't allow you, but it genuinely is just like a regular file. I'm guessing they, they probably don't allow you to do anything because they don't want you to just like mess it up. But everything is a file. That's the philosophy. And essentially, if you wanted to find the user directory, what you can do is you have the home, so you type in home, 
And then from here, you'll find your user directory, if not other user directories, if there are multiple users on your account. And then after that, then you'll be back to your home directory, which is again, the little line. Another question you might be wondering is what shell should you use? I personally am using Zish. Zish, I think is just probably the best shell out there. By default, you're using Bash. Bash is, again, it, Zish is essentially Bash, but there's just some extra features. For example, if I type in the name of a directory, enter, it enters immediately. In Bash, if I go into Bash right, right now, you're gonna have features like that. Like I can type double dot and I'll go to the directory above myself. Or let's say I CD, I can't just type in footage. It's gonna be like, what do you mean? Like there's no footage command or anything, or it's just a directory. You have to type in CD footage. And it's like, if, it's just annoying. But if we go back to Zish, I can type in double dot, boom, I'm back. So personally, that's literally the only reason why I use Zish. It's just better, you know, the colors, I think the colors, you can have the colors in Bash as well. It's The colors are not what like other shells are for. But in my opinion, Zish is probably the best one. You can research. There's also stuff like Fish. Like Fish, I know it has some interesting like features. However, Fish is not POSIX compliant, which essentially means the way you type in commands and like little like shell scripts is different. Like it uses a different syntax. So it's just not universal. So if you make a shell script, it only works for that shell. It doesn't work for Zish or Bash or whatever. Now there are so many commands that I genuinely can't teach you guys every single command. However, there is one command that from that you can learn every other command. Man. If you want to learn any command, just type in man and then whatever command you want to learn about. So let's say you want to learn more about grep. Man grep. Essentially it just means manual. Manual. And you can read and you could just look and you can just read. Like, okay. It is a bit like hard to read sometimes. Like I can't like they're very like let's say two to point. But if you can kind of get the gist of it and you can like look up a command. Oh, okay, this is for word regex and you know, all this invert match. Oh, okay, very interesting. Like, this is the way to learn. Now, let's go over aliases. Aliases, I mentioned it earlier. If you do something like copy and you want to copy like a file to another file, by default, it will just automatically override it, which is a bit dangerous. It's a bit dangerous because you just lose all the file details. Like, at least you want to get a confirmation like, is this what you really want to do? Aliases can help you with this. Actually, I've already made another video to aliases, but I'll just quickly go over it. By default, you should have a .zishrc or a .bashrc or whatever, like fishrc, like whatever your shell is, there'll be a .rc file. If I go into it, you know, I have a lot of commands, but if we just go down to the section here, you can see I have like aliases. You can see I have aliases like alias rm. So for example, I have a alias right here, cp equals cp-i. Essentially, by default, Copy like will just like automatically copy. But if we go to the manual page, if we go to the manual page of copy, there is a little thing that you can add I interactive prompt before override. Essentially, it just makes it safe. So by default, if you type in CP, you're actually typing in CP dash I. That's essentially what an alias does. So it just makes the command shorter. So move by default is actually move. And this is because, you know, it's just easier and you won't ever forget Like you'll always be safe. And then, for example, sometimes, though, you want to just delete everything in a directory and you don't care and you're 100% sure. If you're doing remove dash r, dash r to delete the directive and there's like thousands of files, it's going to ask you for each file. So after that, again, this is dangerous. So you want to be careful, but you can do F and this just means force. And this should be this should work for move, for copy and remove like all of them should be the exact same but you can do let's say rf force like recursive force or force recursive it doesn't matter and that will delete everything no prompt automatically so it's dangerous because if you do something like like never see never trust anyone that says do rm dash rf and then that that will literally delete your entire operating system so be careful be careful but again if you're interested in aliases go check out the video that i've already made on them now, finally, you know, I, I kind of taught you the basics, but how can you actually get to like a proficient level? So I would say number one is just using the terminal as a file browser. So essentially don't use, I have another file browser called Thana, but just use this, use this, learn it, and then learn some shortcuts. Like maybe if you're not sure, like you can like chat GPT it, like how can I do this in a shorter way or just look at it or watch videos on the terminal and you'll just slowly learn over time. Like, oh, I can do this. I can do that. I can you know, double dot, go back, CD, you just learn these little tricks and it'll just, you'll be faster, you'll be way faster. And realize that, and realize that file browsers are just the terminal, but in a GUI format. And because of that, they're actually limited. Like some ways, sometimes I will, I won't lie, a th like a file browser would just be faster to do some certain, certain things. But overall, most of the time I would say terminal is actually 
way faster. Especially with the commands that you can do, you can do some advanced commands, it'd be way faster. And then finally, the last way to really like get good is just practice shell scripting. And I, you know, probably seen my videos, I've done a lot of shell scripting in the back in the day. You know, just learn how to do some simple things like, I don't know, how to get Bitcoin in your terminal browser. I made a video on this if you want to check it out. And actually, most of these scripts I made a video on. So stuff like that, easy way to just like learn and learn more about how to use the terminal. If you want to achieve your dream setup, please look at the top description below. You can book a one on one consultation with me. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please like subscribe helps me out. I'll see you guys next time. Peace.